So welcome to Meet the Mentor. Um, we have Sue Wademan from New Zealand with us today. And I'm just going to read from a little bio for her. Sue Waitman is one of New Zealand's leading contemporary textile artists. She's inspired by the majestic landscape around her and the ever-changing colors. She's been creating her vibrant fabric landscape paintings for more than 20 years. Along the way, she's won numerous local art awards, the most recent being a highly commended at the Arrowtown Autumn Art Awards in 2022 amongst many well-established painters, correct? Actual yes, painters. I, I, I like that bit because yeah. normally in that exhibition, they separate the alternative media from the real artists. But this prize was part of what they call the painting artists. Um, and, and she didn't even mention that it was textile. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I, so. I have. Sue has also taught her unique textile collage technique around the world on the fringe of the art quilt movement in Europe, the UK, South Africa, Japan, Australia, and more recently in the United States. Each of her jewel like artworks are a serendipitous collection of fabrics, mostly silks, stitched and framed. And as one person so eloquently put it, to me, her work is a magical transformation of fabric to exquisite paintings. Her unique creations are a true expression of who she is. So Sue's going to be mentoring an aspiring group for Mastrius, um, starting on the second, it's going to be on the second Sunday of each month from 5 to 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, starting on November 12th. So welcome, Sue. Thank you. And down and south here, it's going to be on the 13th, Monday morning. Yes. <laughs> Just in case they're listening. <laughs> With the time difference, definitely. Yes. There's, we'll have, yes. yeah, because we are an international group. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, it, and it, I mean, that's what's so great about mentors. It can reach everywhere. And I don't have to get in the plane to get there. So, awesome. so, so tell us about how you got started. Were you cultured first? Ah, gosh, I left school at 16 and went into the commercial art world because back then it was all about, um, you know, you had to earn money and you had to get into the art world through the commercial way. And there was a lot of room for artists in commercial art because there were no computers, no digital imaging, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So, yes, it, it was the way in and I had a wonderful mentor that lived near me, a lovely man. And he said, just, just get in, Sue, do your night courses, do whatever you want to do um, at night. So I did graphic design, I did lettering, life drawing, all those sorts of things. Um, because that, you know, basically I, I hadn't done any training. So um, that was back then, it's a long time ago. Um, I know you asked me the other day, well, why? textiles you know how did it become your thing and that wasn't till much later really so seven years one year in well not quite a year but in London and Sydney in the advertising world then three children <laughs> and lots of pottery and craft and making dresses and things I've always loved fabric and that's probably but the two didn't connect you know, I was still using my drawing and layout graphic design skills more. But in the early 90s, I met a quilting lady who was um, in my area and they used to meet every Monday night. My children used to call it chat work, but it was really patchwork. <laughs> and um, and they were doing amazing Baltimore quilts and, you know, vanity quilts, we used to call them, you know, 12 stitches to the inch and all this. And I just, I just couldn't quite go there. But it was, I did learn, I did keep this to show you today, proper patchwork. <laughs> and that's about all I can do now as well, squares put together. 
Um, and I do still enjoy that. I do still enjoy the, the traditional form of quilt making in a very simple way. But no, it came to, um, I did lots of classes with quite a lot of American tutors that came to Sydney, um, just weekend workshops and things. I was always the person who brought the wrong fabric and the wrong thread. I had the wrong machine. Um, so, you know, and, and it was because I was coming at it from an artist's point of view and would always say, well, what if I did this, you know? Um, and so how I, did you decide then to put it into an art piece instead? Uh -huh. So they asked me to come and demonstrate on their wonderful new Beninas in the big Sydney quilt show. And it was quite an honour. And um, because I'm very vision impaired, have been all my life, so I don't see it as a problem. But um, it is a problem when you try and demonstrate because I have to sort of almost put my nose on the sewing machine to see what I'm doing. And I can't, you know, my limitations because of my sight, pushed me in the direction of doing it my way. So I couldn't, you know, do a beautiful flower. They used to draw them with chalk on their quilts and mm -hmm. follow that line. I couldn't do that visually. That's too hard. So when I was asked to demonstrate, I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just throw some fabrics on and I'll just free machine all over it. You know, I'll just scribble on it so to speak and that's what I did and more or less um I'm just gonna can you see what I'm showing you in my phone um I haven't got your phone uh, spotlet so I'll have to let me see if I, I mean, can you don't, you don't have yeah. to this we can see it now there you go there's a pile of fabrics there. there and I more or less just stripped them all ironed them onto a bit of fabric and took that as my demo piece and we, um, they gave me a beautiful Benina sewing machine. Sorry, but it, I've worked with other machines as well. Um, and I just went for it, just free machined. And somehow it turned into more this kind of thing. Um, and yeah. that's, sorry, that camera up, oh, I'm holding now it. We'll show some of yours after. Yeah, we can show more later. But that became... Um, I mean, you can probably turn that off now, oh, so. yeah. But, um, I can put it in its hold in there, that's better. Um, and so I sat there and I just scribbled into it, and it sort of became a landscape. Um, I didn't really, you know, I made some very big quilts like that in the beginning stages, but then. When I moved to New Zealand, I, I'd i done, I don't know, 10 years with the quilters in Sydney promoting our stuff. You know, it, it was because I was raw edge, like it wasn't raw edge applique as such, as people know it. It was fraying edge. So I yeah. literally pick up a bit of fabric and I, I fray the edges. So you and, use the fray as a part of the design. Yes, definitely. And that sort of became my signature. We had a big exhibition travel around Australia and it was a, a picture, I'd, a big quilt I'd done of Uluru, which is the red rock in the middle. And um, I would frayed all this stuff along the bottom in raw silks and, and gorgeous colours of the desert, you know. And it was quite big, I, I don't know, three foot or more, four foot. And um, at one stage, it got to the centre of Australia in a big gallery, and they rang me and asked me, could we give it a haircut? <laughs> oh, <laughs> because, because the frayed edges had frayed a bit too much, you know. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll just cut the long ones off, you know. <laughs> so, it's supposed to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it had probably gone a little bit too far, so they just okay. gave it a little haircut, you know. So um, I guess that's what initiated. It was really that piece of work that initiated that raw edge and using that frayed edge and letting it hang out rather than being neat and tidy and precise. It was a way of being freer with fabric. And I mean, you know, when I was teaching, I kept saying to my students, 
your your textiles hold color so beautifully. You don't have to mix the color. You just have to find the color. And so, you know, the collection of fabrics becomes part of the artistry. The better the fabrics, the better the piece. Somebody so when you're that. planning a piece, Mm -hmm. And I mean, you sort of plan and pick out what your colors are going to be because you have yes. to have the colors and things. Do you actually yes. pick out the design of the fabric as well to find out what's going to work for something? It's very serendipitous. I mean, I will start with a whole heap of fabric and I'll just pull out anything that I think might work. And just like I showed you then, you know, if I'm going to work in greens, I'll pull out all the greens and I'll start lining them and putting them near each other. So, yeah, it's, it's quite serendipitous. I mean, I sometimes use a photo as reference and I try and stick to the photo. So, you know, if it's a recognisable mountain, like we have the Remarkables here and they are remarkable and very recognisable um, and you will see on my website and Instagram and things. Um so I do cut that line out across the sky, that's where the mountain meets the sky, precisely because I'm trying to make that bit recognisable. But often I'm just making it up. You know, I just um, I just will, as long as I've got a, a sky and a mountain of some sort, you know, it starts to look like here. Yeah. And... Then you can, um, sorry, this is with, I'm holding it in my iPad. Um, the sky there looks like it's got um, lighter down near the mountain. Was that like, fabric? Yeah. Tricky, yep, it's fabric. It so, was the fabric that you chose, though, was like yes. that. Yes, 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 correct, correct. And so that's what I mean. The collection of the fabrics is the first thing, and then the, the thinking about is it a sky is it a mountain is it a piece of vineyard you know will it make hay bales or even sheep <laughs> is that bit going to work you know and so do you and go I, shopping for scraps uh-huh <laughs> I, I go begging for scraps mostly <laughs> people don't want their scraps um you know when you've got a oh sorry i'll get my phone this time um, I have a whole back and back and a scrap, you know, different literally. color boxes, boxes of different color scraps. Yes, <laughs> I have recently done these, Karen, because I'm in a new space, and um, I'm not sure. We just moved house, so I don't know where everything is. Ah, so okay. if you find them, I have got the colours in front of me here. Yeah. Nice. And nice. Um, I was going to say, we have some people who have joined us now. Feel free oh, if you good. have questions to ask questions as well. Welcome. Thanks for Can coming. Can we see them? Are we going to see them? Um, I think that um, there I are I cameras on. I'll take the spotlights off. And then you can see them. Them. Yes. There we go. I arrived late, so hi. I didn't catch everything you said, but um, I'm interested. Okay. Hi. Hi, Where Anna. are you? So, can sorry, I'm just going to ask. Can you see them um, now, Sue? No, I saw her okay. instead of you for a minute. So on the left uh -huh. uh, of your iPad, where it's yes. got probably a three by three square. If you touch that, you'll yes. see the gallery view. Yes, yes. Oh, look, there you go. there's lots of people out there. <laughs> Hello. Maybe we need to start again, Karen. I don't know. Oh, it's being recorded. You're absolutely fine. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And I was interrupting you along the way. So you are up with painters in your galleries and things you said. You are up um, in yes. with so, painters, you are shown with painters. So up until the late 90s, I was very much in the quilt world. And I, you know, we do round robins and friendly this, that and the other. And, and I was, I've said before, I, I couldn't do the precision of a quilt maker and the corners and the neatness. So it developed from that to the 
more collage and frayed edges of fabric. And when I got to New Zealand, I tried to join. So I jumped from Sydney to New Zealand in the year nine, in the year 2000. And I tried to join a quilt group and they were sitting around making round robins again. And I thought, no, I can't do this again. So I joined the art group here, which was an art society group, women usually doing watercolours and men. Um, and that was the beginning of trying to fit my work into the art world. And you've got a picture, Karen, on your, you know, the ones I gave you. Yeah, so I'm going to get my screen yes. and I'm going to go in and into my files here. And we'll start with number one. Maybe you can just tell yes. us. About it. Yeah. Yes. So when I got to New Zealand, this is the mighty Kawara Gorge River and rivers are blue in New Zealand. They're not blue in Australia. So it fascinated me. This isn't actually the winning piece, but it's very similar. Um, oh, I've given away the story now. but um, So I put in a, a soft quilt that was all collage. And I went to the framer with a piece like this. And I said, you know, it's an art exhibition. I better put this in a frame. And he quoted me, that's the framer standing there. He said that it'll be about $500 soon. And I said, no, and I took it home, but I left my husband, he's an artist too. I left my husband's painting there to be framed, but I took mine home and thought that's just ridiculous. I've never paid 500 to frame anything. And it's because it needs archival art glass and everything. Anyway, um, I thought the next morning, Sue, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. So I did pay for the frame to go on the piece of work. It's, you can see the size. It's, you know, yeah. it's not that big, but it was expensive because of the special archival things. And we put it in the show and the committee was sort of saying, mm, over there, you know, take it over there, hang it over there in the corner. And we had a very prestigious man guest judge that year. And in the end, it won best of show. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. And that was 2000, year 2000. So it became, you know, I was sort of the new kid on the block. Nobody had used textiles like this before. Um, and the people, you know, then had to respect it because he was well respected. And that kept happening. You've got other photos, Karen, of some yeah. of the other boys. Oh. But that kept happening. This one, I mean, I look a bit younger there. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was the Blossom Festival, again, against paintings of all sorts and genres. Um, this must be 15 years ago. Um, and I won with a postcard size piece this time. And again, it's... I can remember asking the judge why, why because I still see textiles, but the judge said it's because the textile has abstracted its suit. And I don't really see it like that because I'm still seeing the fabric. But when they come with a painting mind and they're looking at other paintings, they just see the image. So if the image is right, even if it is textiles, oh, that's not a real medium. <laughs> There's still purists out there. There's, you know, we've we've had to yeah. work hard to get it accepted. Um, but that's what drove me on and that's what gave me the opportunities that I had. And so, they do say if the values are correct, you yes. can show anything. Can I move yes. on to the next one? Yes, 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 yes. So... The, oh, this is another little one. So mine's the triptych there in the black frame. Yeah. And again, that's, you can see their painting. That's actually my husband's sailing boat behind my, on top of my head. Oh. <laughs> and he didn't so this win. one is yours. <laughs> and, but that one's mine. And that's the vineyards. I did a whole exhibition in a vineyard. We have beautiful Pinot Noir grapes here. And mm -hmm. lots of the land is going into grapes at the moment. Um, so yes, we, I, I did a whole series 
after this invited to exhibit in a winery. So, oh, nice. you know, one thing kept leading to the next thing. And I think, honestly, it's because fabric hasn't been used so much in this way. Well, and it is so different. Um, and, oh, and this is this is quite a long story, so you can just flick through. Um, so from those, particularly the men, oh, don't go too fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is, <laughs> I was going to say I do big and I do small, mostly small these days. But um, the opportunity to do um, a public work in textiles is very hard to get because it's fragile. But anyway, I did win this submission to do a work for our small, that was our um, airport, the front of it, the one that just went past. Yeah. And um, this took about six months, Karen, with a lot of fabric. And again, it's our Remarkables Mountain. You'll see, keep going. This is us putting it up at the airport. I couldn't believe how well it hung. This is me unveiling it at the opening. So we covered oh. it up, unveiled it. There was no um, direct sunlight on it. There's me standing in front of it at the airport on a soapbox <laughs> talking to the crowd. And um, this this kind of made my name in Queenstown. Next so point. you are, it, is it still hanging in the airport? It has moved. The airport has probably grown 10 times the size now. Yeah. And um, this was on the evening. They actually auctioned off one of the, the piece I made. I had to make a small piece to convince them about doing a big piece. Uh -huh. I don't think it's a... I don't think there's a photo of it, but um, we auctioned it off on the night. So it was good too. <laughs> I mean, it was flavor of the month time. Keep going, Karen. Um, so you can see it was quite a crowd. That's our airport. Wow. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was all there was in those days. <laughs> so, um, yes, we have grown. And, uh, and there it is. Yeah. yeah. It looks and it lovely. Moved. It, it did suit the space. It was the only thing <laughs> that went wrong, not the light. A sparrow got in and sat oh. on top of it and popped down it. <laughs> oh, so, okay. How so, do you finish it to protect it in a place like I didn't. This? I'm too scared of the chemicals to spray anything. So, so I didn't. But... um. Once the poo dried from the bird, it just flicked off. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> One lady wanted to put it in the washing machine and I said, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> you maybe could spot clean it. Do you wash your fabrics before you use no. them? No. No, Karen. No. Um, you know, I'm not thinking of anybody using these for anything except putting them in a frame now and or hanging them soft. Um, this is this is a smaller scale down one, but again, a larger piece than I mostly do. Um, but you can see that's that's a very simple color scheme. And yeah. in class, in class, I go through the five elements of design. That's where the homework will come into play um, to get you to do line design, shape design, to think about tonal value. So, so is that what the folk? What is going to be the focus of your group? The focus of my group is to engage people to use textiles if they're only using paint. Um, and I think for people who are already interested in fabric, it's to break them away from the traditional form of quilting and making things for craft projects. I'm trying to push the fabric and textiles into the art world and help them do that by it depends where they are and what they want to do but mostly um it's just like a painting artist it's to create something beautiful that you can enjoy and give to people or whatever you do with them so, so yeah you're going to go over the design elements you're going to go over values yes. and colors yes um, and and we'll do that by doing exercises with the fabric so that you're also learning how to manage the fabric how to manipulate the fabric not too much about sewing it, you know i mean i do free machine and, and i can demo that but free machining is a thing you have to practice to get it and i only scribble i'm not 
doing anything very difficult. I'm just holding it together. I stitch less and less these days because I don't want the stitch to interfere with the image. I okay, mean, so the stitch does not become a part of the image. So you're not talking about free motion quilting where it no, takes no, no, no. the design. No. All I'm trying to do when you switch me back, I'll show you, um, is put a little bit of, I mean, you can barely see the stitch in that piece. But if you go to the next one, there is a little bit. I follow the colours. Oh. oh, that's another bigger piece. That, wow. That was done for a lady who wanted the mountains, the river, the lake. She wanted everything, the trees, the vineyards. You know, it's kind of a montage of everything around here. Sue, wow. may I ask? Sorry, may I ask a couple yeah. questions? Do you yes. add paint, do you add paint to any of this, or is this strictly all fabric? I I'm almost a purist. <laughs> if I can't get a shadow right, sometimes I'll add a an oil pastel. You not paint, um, but mostly I look for the shape or the tone or whatever I want in the fabric and because I'm using sheer fabrics a lot I can change the tone of a fabric or put a shadow on with a sheer fabric oh. so unlike quilting where it's got to be 100% cotton and you mustn't let it fray <laughs> we I fray it and I can use silk georgette or my I have a lovely auntie in San Francisco and the, when I went to the big quilt show, we visited her. She took me to a beautiful shop right in the city. I can't remember its name. And she said, oh, this is my famous <laughs> daughter-in-law. And she, you know, needs to look at your most beautiful silk georgettes, you know, the ones that are $150 a meter. And, he, <laughs> you know, undid a little cord and sat me down in a posh chair and said, look, <laughs> this. And I said, oh, I'll have 10 centimetres. Oh, sorry, five inches of each. <laughs> <laughs> he was hoping for a big sale. Um, I do have a couple other questions, but I know Debbie's been waiting to ask a question. I Deb don't see any oh. hands up. Sorry, when I'm sharing the screen, I don't see Yeah, that. that's okay. So, uh, Debbie, why don't you ask your question, then I'll ask my other question after. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So, so I quilt, so I'm going to ask you, like, uh, questions do you put backing on this to mount this or like quilt backing or is I, it um, on I was showing I won't show you because you can't see me can you see me I, we can I, see you see you. I do see oh, okay. you on okay um I use a, a I call it a cotton duck it's okay. like canvas but yeah. you can't use normal painting canvas because that's been primed or gessoed but it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's called cotton duck. It's a heavy, you see, you don't call it calico either. It's a cream. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it you is. You know what it is. Well, cotton yeah. duck. And, yes. and do you do you glue it to your cotton duck? Or are you always so, like, you said you try not to use too much stitching and. Um, I, it's, a, there is a fuse that I use. And in, in your part of the country or world, um, Karen and I think probably steamer seam would do it. So it's, Fus you know, what that inter is. we call it fusible interfacing also. Yeah. Uh, right. Can you there is a specific fusible interfacing that Sue was looking for, and mm. I haven't found it here. So we found steamer seam too. And so you could explain why you were using a oh. specific one. Is that like fusible web? Is that, it's it's no, a two-sided fusible interfacing, but it has paper on it because she uses the paper. So, so it's it. very, very yeah. soft, right? I have so that at home. Yeah. Oh, good. What's it? Yeah, called? I I use I do quilts, but I do a lot of appliques on my quilts, so I use and that a lot. Debbie, what, what kind do you use? Um, I don't know. You know what? I'm moving, so all my stuff is in boxes right now. <laughs> Um, I it's called, but I think I ordered at some point I ordered it online at you know on, on Amazon but usually like I live in the province of Quebec um, right. and usually it's pretty easy to find in in the fabric stores here like we have a fabric store. I don't know if you have a place called uh, Club Fabric somewhere else in Canada like I know oh that one <laughs> I think it's I think it's might be a 
uh, only a French thing. It's called Club de Sissou and uh, it's pretty good. But I think Fabricville, which you call Fabric Land. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I, I find that um, I use that all the time. The I sew over it and then I just rip off the backing. Sometimes I'll sew edges and it's beautiful what you do. The, the, thank you. The thing is, you, you just said you rip off the back. Sometimes. Sounds, no, well, sometimes, yeah, no, sometimes I will sew the edges because I'm making a quilt that'll go in the, in the, um, in the, the washing yes. machine. Yeah. So I might cut a shape out, put the backing on it, keep the paper yes. and then just do the edges like a, um, yeah, like, like an type of thing. D does it peel off like this? It does, but we leave the glue off. here. Yeah. And then you just oh. iron it on. Yeah. And then you, well, so that's what, so I'll, I'll have a piece how big I'm going to use and then I'll peel that off and then I lay all the landscapey bits on it. Oh, oh, so cool. And yeah. then it, and then it fuses. Okay. Um, I thought you did it. <laughs> you fused each piece. Okay. No, that's well, great. Well, well, I teach both ways because you do have to, in the end, you do have to do something more like an applique if you want trees or a horse or, you know, a house or something that's a real shape. You, then and they, you and they the other is way. saying, and they are saying, heavy duty wonder under might work. Um, when that's what I'm using some of my paintings, but I don't know if it's the same thing. But I paint on it and then peel the back off and then use like a medium to mm -hmm. adhere it to. I can. Okay. Oh my goodness. I know and you can then paint. Misty Fuse. Misty Fuse. Did you you said you're familiar with Misty Fuse, Sue? Yes. That's but an that's American. not as um strong for the kind of things you're um, doing. Um it's no, it's good. It's for underneath a sheer fabric. So uh, okay. you can't you can't use your I don't think anyway, your seam of seams. I can't use this one under a sheer fabric. It will show, it shows like it's glistening a bit. Yeah. Um, so I try not to put anything under a shear to tell you the truth. That's why I use the stitch to hold the okay. shears. Um, but the, the fuse, I actually met the lady who, who made that product back in the, I don't know, nineties. And the good thing about it is you can get, you can get white and black. Yeah. The misty fuse is nice. Um, then, what was the name of the fusible interface that you had shown before that you use? Uh -huh. German. My, I call it Visafix. I think it's German. Um, and remember, I sent you those pictures, Karen. Of the yeah. So brand. I, I did I find Visafix um, from Etsy, but it was very expensive to send it. Well, if the other ones work, we'll soon know once we yeah. start. Yeah. Once so, we, start, um, we have we'll a soon know what here. works. Uh -huh. We have a question. So someone's asking um, where you get your inspiration, your reference, and how yes. you translate a simplified image to your work. Do you do sketching? Um, what do you do? I get no. Um, sometimes I... I I've, I'm much more empowered, I don't know what the word is, to do something that I've seen, right? So, so I don't just flick through Pinterest and find a photo of some random mountain somewhere. I am inspired by what I see here. And so, you know, it might just be a field of corn, well, you don't have corn, a field of vineyards, or it might be a mountain range. Um, and if I'm doing a mountain range that I want to have recognizable, like this one, I'm just going to show you quickly. Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to hold it back here. Um, oh, that's those, lovely. See, those mountains are very recognizable. I'm going to spotlight you again, Sue, just a second so that we can okay. see it closer. Okay, here you go. There we go. So, those mountains are so very recognizable around here because the, the line against the sky looks a little bit like a sleeping nun. We call it okay. a sleeping nun. And so people recognize that. So that is, I'll try and find the photo quickly. 
Um, so you can phone. use the photo reference. Do you take yes. your photos yourself? Um, not always. That photo for that piece is from a photographer friend. I'll use other people's photos, but I have to have been there, seen it myself to engage in doing it. Um, I mean, there's lots. I mean, if I went back to Australia, it would all be orange and, you know, outback scenes again, I think. Yeah. And but here it's all blue and green. Pardon? Did, do you do any sketching to sketch out your compositions or no. color, color, no. um, not really studies or anything? No. no, no, I just get the fabric. Uh, it's therapeutic, owning all the fabrics, all the little scraps and things like I showed you. And it's so you like um, to iron. I, I love to iron them. Yes, <laughs> look at the state of my iron, though. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Doesn't that hurt your? Doesn't that hurt your? No, fabric? it doesn't. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, my other one at the other end of the studio looks like that as well. Um, you do try and protect it, but um, no, I, I occasionally burn a fabric, but not very often. And because they're all silk, some of them not silk. Some of them are synthetic, so they will burn. So anything you can use, anything that's. The art of collection again is yeah. very important. So is silk your favorite fabric then? Silk, yes, silk chouchette, silk anything. You, I mean, and and like I say, there's so many places you can go and rummage through rummage, you know, rubbish bins, not exactly, but you know, a bridal person who's making bridal clothes will throw away the bits we can use. And um, I've got lots of silk scraps that way. I mean, back in the day, I, I don't, we don't have, we only have a sort of very general fabric store. No, nobody really selling silk here. Um, silly. So, yes, I've got it from every time I've traveled and I really don't need any more. This is all fabric behind me in these. All of those bins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't need any more. I've got to finish that lot. Uh -huh. in the next 20 years <laughs> so um but yes it, you know the more fabric you have but it's mostly for quilters breaking out it's mostly about getting the sheer fabrics the fabrics you can see through it doesn't really matter if they're silk or not you're looking for painterly pieces hand dyed pieces somebody might be dyeing scarves that you know get them to give you the bits they cut off the selvage whatever what about so dyeing them yourself? Have you ever done that? I've done a lot of dyeing. <laughs> As my husband says, yes, you're not dead yet. But <laughs> anyway, um, I have done a lot of dyeing. And I know some of my students have gone on to do a lot more dyeing. But I don't have time to dye the, you know, I, I've got a lot. I mean, I've got a whole box of skies yeah, that I've collected. So I don't do that so much, but I always say, yes, if you can dye your own, do it. And or find somebody that does do it and buy theirs is my recommendation as well. So if Have there's you... someone starting out like me, mm -hmm. I've got quilting fabric, but I haven't got all kinds of different colors. I've got some big pieces here, some there. I've got some jelly rolls and things. Yes. What recommend someone like me do to start to go and get? <laughs> fabrics because well, you, I don't even know where to go for that kind of thing um well there's a shop in San Francisco <laughs> is that anywhere near you Karen? no I mean you have a range of fabrics like this um yeah in your fabric stores so anything organic -y looking like this is looking like stones right um, yeah. that's, I just that's don't think give me five inches if I went in and asked for five inches. I don't know what the smaller, that's why I'm saying go and find the, 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 the people who are making clothes, go find the scarf makers at the markets. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, there was a lady in Spain who made her own silk jackets. She gave me, I've still got her scraps, you know, I'm still using them. We, I could also it. see going into like a consignment store and yes, you can use clothing. old scarves, old yeah, 
I mean, if if you're buying clothing, I would wash them. I don't like yeah. thrift stores because I don't like the smell in there. But um, but you can buy some really cheap stuff. And I'd say, especially if you've only got cottons now, go and you know find some. I mean, you must have fabric stores for dress dress fabric. This is dress I, fabric. I don't know down here. I'll have to look, but I'm sure that yeah. I can find. Yeah. I also have a collection of scarves at home that yes. are out of style it's... and that I don't want to get rid of because each of them means a little something. So you could actually yes. be creating an yep. image Have... with something that really means something to you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the fabric will tell the story in the end. It's 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 such a um, a use. I mean, I mean, a bit like I have no idea where this bit came from. But can you see how you can see through it? Yes. So when you put something behind it, you can change the color and tone of what's behind it to get something different. So I don't even know where half of this. These are Jap Japanese fabrics. So when I was in Japan, I did buy a whole, they were actually, they don't sell secondhandy things. Well, they didn't when I was there. But someone was selling a scrap bag and they're just all little bits of hand dyed and they're mostly silk in Japan. I mean, they, some of them look very Japanese. To me, this one looks more like a field of, you know, field of a crop or something. Mm -hmm. So it, it's trying to identify your fabric as what, what am I going to use this for? So, yeah, yeah I, I guess in class, that's why I go through just doing simple exercises first because all of a sudden you'll get it. Ah, that's how I do that. And, oh, that works. And, you know, once you pick up, just like you do with paint, learning your tonal values to get distance, learning how to scale things differently towards the foreground, all those things you've learned, Karen, in your artwork, apply to the imagery you're doing with fabric. You just have to learn how to use the fabric. So, and you have to have the fabric. <laughs> so I don't know. Any other questions? Is there anyone who has questions in the group? I, I can't see them, Karen. Can you see them? Um, you would have to go back to the gallery view where it okay. is. All right. I'll have a question. Um, yes. so when you're thinking of your, of your uh, compositions, mm -hmm. um, how do you simplify it? Do you have like a formula where you only have, you allow yourself so many shapes? Do you, um, you know, work off a reference photo or are you just working off your own kind of creative memory? Some, sometimes, uh, sometimes, I mean, yes, it is memory. You're right. If you're out and about looking at the landscape, you suddenly realize, oh, there's always a light along the edge of the lake when it hits the mountain. You know, you start looking at colors and think, oh, it's not blue, it's purple, or, you know, it's not green, it's gray. So observation, yes. And my husband being a painting artist, he would say, you know, you've got to learn to see before you can draw. Um, so yeah, observation and then a reference photo sometimes, yes. And I'm the only bit that really concerns me and I keep telling students is watch out where your horizon is and I don't want it in the middle. And yeah. that's what I mostly, as long as you keep it away from the middle, you can go into your bottom fifth or your top fifth, whatever. And, and it's about, again, the story, the imagery you're trying. Like this, honestly, this is a very typical one of what I do because it's got the lake, it's got the land, it's got the mountains. And I always start in this top third with that horizon there. So, the top of the yeah. And and also it's it is serendipitous because you know I might have ironed, I don't know, 30 little fabrics to make that piece. But then it depends which one fits in, you know, do I use this one? Do I use that one? And that's the lovely thing about textiles. Once you paint in a mountain, you can't lift it off. I mean, you can, you can paint over it, but in fabric, you can put it down. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. Try the other bit of fabric, you know, use a, use a sheer piece over another piece. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Debbie has said your work. Thank you very much. Your work is beautiful and so interesting. Thank you. That's lovely. Yeah. Do you um, need like sketches to kind of figure out your composition first, or are you just working more intuitively? More intuitively. Yeah. I'm so used. I, you've got to remember, I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, you know, and I am so used to the fall of the land. I mean, I still learn new things and I, I, you know, I will always observe other people's paintings and take in the, you know, the, the things that I need to learn about light particularly. Uh, so I'm always learning, but mostly it just, it just comes. I, I know what I'm doing, I guess, by this stage, but I can easily teach people a, you know a step by step I plan to do that Go and have you ever incorporated beadwork I have done but I don't that much you don't, but you no, could. I'm just thinking when you know you look at what you do and different people to make it more their own may want to incorporate different things oh like absolutely yeah look I um, love people to experiment yeah. with it and with your aspiring group, are you going to be covering anything about um, finishing it, how to frame it, putting things or getting into yeah. galleries or stores or anything like that? Absolutely. I think it's part of the process to, I mean, you don't have to. You can just enjoy the pleasure of creating. Yeah. It's good for the soul and it's good for people, you know, who want to develop a new skill. Um, but for me, it's always that added I, I know another artist friend he said you just got to get it on the wall <laughs> you know and I don't know why I, I it's like sharing your soul then but it's like a singer I mean it's not much fun singing in your garage it's when you get on stage and they give you a <laughs> microphone that's when it's fun so uh, I've done that so, too so you <laughs> talked there... about you talked Sorry. about um bringing light in so like Oil and acrylic usually work dark to light yes. and uh, watercolor light to dark. So do you have a rule with um, textiles? Whether you're doing a simple line design, which is where I like to start everybody. Um, I did learn early in the piece, you have to get from the light to dark. I was always scared of getting to the white side. And equally, uh, uh, the dark side, the black side, and I'd stay pretty much in the middle with my choices. But now I know if I'm going to do a green piece dominantly, I have to go right to the lime green and almost the white green and right through to the depth of the greens. So, mm -hmm. so, and that is what creates that you know, touch of light. With that piece I showed you, it wasn't until I put the gold line of fray in that it came to life because suddenly it had light. And I do like the metallics. So I sometimes just use the metallic thread to do the last little bit of stitch, but it's but it adds a glisten, a glow. So yes, you do have to That's so interesting. It. Yeah, thank you. This has been super interesting. So. And how do you, if you were going to frame yourself, because you yes. can't, you know, don't want to go and spend five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. It's a thousand dollars now. <laughs> well, I only even want that's to spend kiwi dollars. Yet. So, so how, would you that's kiwi dollars. It over or what do you do? How do you? Would no, you do it? I, do I'm. It? I'm. I'm. I know, I know the women to have longevity, right? I know, but these frames, you must have these frames at your yeah. store. Yeah, yeah. And this is ten dollars now. Yeah. Time. So how is it on the Maybe back? Scratched? Is, is, so is it? Is it put on something else? I hate to tell you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll get it out of here. Um, when I hold it up, it'll look like a scrap. So it's oh. on its. It's on its canvas, you know, stitched onto the little bit of canvas. Yeah. Um, and then it's ironed and, you know, really carefully ironed. So it's flat. I, 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 you can go quite three-dimensional. I used to fold the mountain fabric. I used to use velvet yeah. for the mountain. Um, and so that's another thing we, we will play with. But um, this is fairly flat, so I iron it flat. And then I um, use masking tape. Okay. Look, this this piece of work, 
um, in this frame costs $200 here. I don't try and convert it, but, you know, 250 in a gallery and I'm losing 30 to 40 percent. It doesn't have to be last for a lifetime. You know, it's it's I, I'm not saying this is going to go rotten, but it's not going to last 100 years either. No. And you would have to, of course, hang it somewhere where it's not going to get the sun. And yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then once you put the mat on, um, once you put the mat on, it starts to look more like a piece of artwork, and not yes, just a yep. scrap. Yeah. Doesn't that make a difference once you yes, mat? Does, eh? Yeah. And so, you know, it depends what you want to do. If you want to do a big piece, and if I'm selling it for three thousand dollars, then yes, I have to get it done. Yeah, I will. Yeah, and I have to do that properly. And and there are people who will pay for that without even blinking, you know. It's it's just depends. And there's other people, those early days um, with the bigger wall hangings. I mean, I'd love to do another one, but one, they take a lot of time. They're not commercially viable. Nobody wants to hang them in their galleries. Um, so I only do those if someone requests it for their home and they usually want it in their home because they want a soft furnishing to absorb the noise or something you know it's just yeah. oh I just want a quilt so you know it doesn't echo in my house so some people will think I don't have a half decent sewing machine or I only have one that does a straight and a zigzag but you don't need much no. really you need to just no, no, be no, able to no, you don't. I started with a very basic machine. All you need to do is drop your feed dogs. And and sometimes you it, in old machines, you cover them. And yeah, so like them, to, for free motion. Yeah, for free motion. You, I mean, you don't oh. need much for free motion. I don't even know how to change my machine back to normal. It's been on free <laughs> motion so long, <laughs> you know. Um, um, Debbie, I have, I have just that one Final question, because when you held up your your little um, your work of art up close, yeah. I love yeah. it. Um, yeah. Your machine, and I'm thinking you have a machine that that uh, does it has the letters, and you embroider the your name Sue. I saw that it was very cool. So I guess you've programmed your machine already. No. No, like that's free it. motion. That's free that's motion. You free do that for free motion. Okay. Well, yeah. you know what? Yeah. Well, you're gonna I, have to practice. <laughs> yeah, I've had machines. That we, yeah, <laughs> you. I mean, I presume there is machines that you can program oh, yeah. them to. Yeah. But once you do a free machine, you know you can move it any way you want to. Yeah. So you okay. don't have to feed it through. You drop the feed dogs. You put on a darning foot, which is a little yeah. round, and so it doesn't hit the fabric. So you literally can move your fabric around and around and it's called free motion in, in oh, your country yes. yeah yeah I had that but I I know that there's also I had a machine it was a, a faff sewing machine it was a German made mm -hmm. sewing machine really excellent yes. and yes. it had embroidery and it had also an attachment that you could actually draw your image oh wow yes. put it through and it happen. It, yes and it would just it would do what you've drawn so I'm thinking like for a signature if yes. you want your signature to look yes. alike in your artwork Yes. Uh, yeah, but I, it's oh. really beautiful. <laughs> I'd love that. Would that would be great. I'd love you to try that. I want to yeah. see that. <laughs> I do have a faff. I do have a faff. Okay. My faff. I call my faff my proper machine. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it's again, it would be twenty five years old. So I doubt whether it would have the. It does do embroidery, but it doesn't do that yeah. kind of. My thing. my faff died about ten years ago, and uh, it oh. was it, it couldn't be report re repaired, and it was just so expensive that I thought, okay, you know what, let it go to its um, its <laughs> resting place. It's done <laughs> its job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. Yes, I killed a few machines. This was yes. great. You have given us a lot of information. Do you have any final words for us, just as we finish up here? Just that I really like the idea behind Mastrius, that idea that it's mentoring, that you don't all have to do what I do, that you can use it where you're up to and with the knowledge you've already got and you can try it and move on and you can try it and develop it into your own style 
and and so it's more that mentorship rather than this is how we do it step by step yep. you know so even awesome. though I will do that because I think that's part of the learning process but then you can move it in your direction yeah yeah and our group is um, due to start. It's on November 12th. It's going to be the second Sunday of the month. And um, or Monday, we, if you're underneath. Or if Monday, you're if you're down under. But I don't know if you're down under. Maybe you shouldn't be over us. You should be behind us. But I'm, anyway. I'm ahead of you. Way ahead. <laughs> you're way <laughs> ahead of us, Sue. Yeah. Way ahead. Yes. But thank you so much for sharing. And if anyone is looking to know, just go to Mastrius, M-A-S-T-R-I-U-S dot com and look up Sue Wademan, W-A-D-E-M-A-N. And, and you've got photographs on there, haven't you, of my work? Do you you've have my got Insta photos on there and a link to your website and a link to your Instagram. So it is. Yes. OK, super. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you, Karen. You've been great. Thank and you. Thank Have you a great day. Thank you, Debbie.